Hello friends. Today I want to show you how I wove my beautiful new washcloths. They are marvelous and an absolute joy to use. Uh, I will eventually get over the fear of messing them up, but I have used them to remove my makeup and then washed. And so I know that simple little ordinary task like that, these are perfectly up to the job. So it's really cool. Also, I want to share a little bit more of the things that I've learned recently about my Cherokee ancestry and some of the things I've been through with that. And I think that's really been a lot of fun. So stick around. Let's do this thing. friends I got a couple of goodies in the mail I want to show you so first of all <laughs> this is an ancestry DNA kit now I've said before that um, I've done really well with my genealogy I know a lot about the people that I come from I actually know way way back which is crazy but really fun um, so I have a, a, the sense that I probably understand pretty well who I am where I come from Although, of course, I can make new discoveries and stuff all the time because this is a very much an in-process thing. I haven't been able to get very far with my husband with his genealogy because there's just not a tremendous amount of information known. So, I mean, there's family stories and stuff, but I can't, I just haven't been successful, you know. And I think part of it is that I don't read German, so <laughs> that doesn't help. But ancestry, DNA, to the rescue. So... I'm hoping this will open all kinds of doors and make it possible to understand where he comes from. I really think there's going to be, because he grow, grew up in Austria, Germany, Switzerland, and my people are from Switzerland, Germany, Austria, kind of in that neighborhood of Europe, and you know, those borders have changed around quite a bit in not that, I mean, in pretty recent history. So. Um, I think it's possible that we may have some kinds of similar DNA. Seems like we've got a lot of similarities <laughs> between us. I'm both crazy, artsy, um, very inventive. He's got such an inventive mind. It's really cool. He's a craftsman. I've always wanted to be a craftsperson. So, you know, it is kind of, it's kind of amusing. Recently, I discovered that I had Cherokee ancestry, and one of the first things I wanted to do was apply that to my capsule wardrobe somehow. How can I make something that is respective of my Cherokee ancestry that I can wear, that can be a part of my self-expression? And so, I just got the box today. This is a Beadalon Jewel Loom. And I chose a the Gatsby Loom bracelet kit. And this is black, white, and silver. Here's the clasp, there's glue, there's thread. And in here, there is the bead loom. And this will make it possible to make bracelet, that kind of thing. So I'm actually really kind of interested. I watched this being done on YouTube. It's very simple. And so I am really excited to um, check out my resources in terms of seed beads. Um, the Cherokee used Venetian glass beads 
And so I am going to be checking that out to see what I can find in the way of Venetian glass to make something that feels like it, it's, it's expressive of my Cherokee ancestry. So, yes, this is a kit to make a bracelet that looks like that. Now they're calling this a Gatsby pattern, and I think that will go very nicely once I make it. <laughs> if I ever get around to making it. This will go very nicely with some of my 1920s plans that I have. So I will look forward to, to making that. And then I will look forward to using the loom to make something that's got more of a Cherokee look or feel to it. I will, in the meantime, be doing a little research on finding Venetian glass beads. So that's, I think, going to be a cool project. an order with the Museum of the Cherokee Indian and found some really interesting things there. So in the course of my uh, genealogical research I found a name, a family name, that um, this guy led one of the groups from the East Cherokee in the removal to uh, Oklahoma. So he was, um, he shares a family name with me. Now I don't think he's actually related to me because if he was my ancestor, then he would have been 15 years old at the point that he led a group of, of, of Native Americans and a couple of white people to, um, along the Trail of Tears to Oklahoma. So I don't necessarily think that he was my ancestor. However, I think this will be very informative. There was on that journey a reverend who kept a diary and the diary is now available for purchase and I bought one. This is called Cherokee Removal, the Journal of Reverend Daniel S. Buttrick. And I have just flipped through and it's just brutal at a glance. This is going to be a painful read, but I think this will, um, this is a story I need to read. So first-hand account. So I picked a random entry to read to you just because I thought maybe you would find it interesting. It's, I, I'm not sure interesting is the right word. Okay, so this is Thursday, June 28th, and this is what he says. Mr. Nave, who has a Cherokee family, says that as a company of prisoners were about to cross the creek at his house, he heard a horseman say as he rode up that a certain old creek woman had given out and some wagons must stop and take her in. Soon after, a soldier on foot came up and all the wagons in the company started on. He supposes the old woman had been killed by the soldier and hid away, as he and several others hunted afterwards but could find nothing of her. Last night, a company of about 20 Cherokees returned, who had escaped from a late company of 1,100 who had started off to the west by land. They say that the whole company almost famished, that for two days together they had nothing to eat and the rest of the time but very little. They say that as the company were about to cross the river on starting, one woman was very sick, unable to sit up and lay on the ground, and the soldier came along and kicked her in the side and drove her into the boat, and that after landing she was just seen, and then in a short time she was missing. They suppose she died. Six individuals had died before they left the company. It is said that many old women driven in this company cried like children when they started, saying they never could live to walk that journey in this hot season but their cries could not be heard. They were driven on. This is not gonna be a fun book to read, but it feels important to me to understand, to some small degree, what that journey was like.
One of the other things that I recently picked up was this Arts and Crafts of the Cherokee, and it has been so much fun to look at the baskets and the wood carving and the wood crafts, the just the pottery, all kinds of different stuff. It's absolutely a fascinating read. Now, um, the Cherokee practice three kinds of weaving, kind of at different spots in the history. Finger weaving, which I think is kind of similar to uh, Japanese kumihimo. They were weaving bands and belts and uh, even up to 200 threads they were working at the same time. So it's a, it's a pretty complicated kind of braiding. I think it's really cool. I'm really hoping to learn more about how that works. Um, they also did what we would call tapestry style weaving with a big frame and they had frames up to like six foot by six foot and so they were weaving cloth and rugs and um, mats and that kind of thing. And they wove floor rugs with flax and then painted designs on them. So that would be cool. Wouldn't it be cool to see something like that in a museum? Now, unfortunately, a lot of the cloth just doesn't exist anymore because of archeologically cloth is the first thing to go, but they were able to show that Cherokee very often used uh, woven cloth and pressed it into their pottery. And so that weaving exists to this day in the form of decoration. I just think that's so cool. And then later on in Cherokee history, um, in 1770, an Englishman brought a four, uh, a four harness loom over from Europe and taught his Cherokee wife how to use it. And so this is a picture of a, of a Cherokee girl demonstrating her skill weaving the four harness loom. Now later when uh, commercial cloth became available and cheap, um, that wasn't something that was used as much anymore. Um, but they did have a number of specific Cherokee patterns, uh, one of which they showed here, and I think this is really cool. It's called the Road to Soko, and this is uh, created by, I thought there was the name, oh, by Roxana Standing Deer. So this is the Road to Soko pattern, it's a Cherokee pattern. Isn't that cool? I am absolutely loving that. There's also Cherokee patterns, Flying Geese, Running Bear, Bear's Paw, Squash Blossom, Snowflake, and Sacred Bird. So how cool is that? That has really um, answered some questions for me because I wanted to be able to um, explore what that looked like. What are Cherokee patterns? What are um, common methods? Oh, and they also were weaving using flax, hemp, uh, nettles, and grasses and buffalo hair. <laughs> so I think what they would have been able to achieve with those tools would have been uh, really quite sophisticated and I think that's amazing. So what I'm loving about this and what feels very personal and important to me is that I'm descended from Mennonite weavers and now that I know that I have Cherokee ancestry as well, and I know that they are weavers, I don't know that the specific ancestors were weavers, but I know that as a people, they were weavers. And so it, it's even feeling more important to me than ever that I can sit down to the loom and make something simple and wonderful and feel like I'm a part of uh, a place in history that is rich with color and fiber and texture and just that ability to use something that's handmade instead of buying something that's machine made at a store. It feels authentic and really close to who I am. And that's a really good feeling that I'm really enjoying right now. So this whole, um, this whole experience of learning that I have Cherokee ancestry has been very different for me than a lot of people because my family didn't have that lore oh, you've got a Cherokee great-grandmother or whatever. She was an Indian princess or whatever. I mean, I didn't grow up with that lore. I came across this by accident. And, and by the way, <laughs> if you ever meet a Cherokee person in, in the flesh, like a real Cherokee, I mean, I'm, it's, it's sinking in that I'm Cherokee. I, I don't feel authentic. To, I mean, look at me. I don't look in the mirror and see a Cherokee, okay? So, I mean, it's obviously very distant in my in my DNA, but don't ever tell a Cherokee that you're descended from an Indian princess because that doesn't come from the idea that there would be a princess in the Cherokee um, structure of governance. 
is funny to them. And that idea probably came from Disney, not the Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's lay that little um, thing to rest, shall we? I just think it's it's amusing to me how these stories get handed down and they may or may not even have any um, any basis in truth. But the but the funny thing is, is I didn't grow up in a family with that story. And as it turns out here, I've got these micro bits of DNA and that's actually making me really happy. I'm loving how it's connecting me with who I am. Well, now it's time to take this thing off the loom. I'm not really sure how many washcloths are in here, but in between each section I have woven um, with a super fine cotton. This was uh, one I actually got in a box at Goodwill. I got the whole box full of, of yarns, cotton yarns for 20 bucks. Whole box full. So I've used that yarn in this last inch of this weaving and throughout in between the washcloths. So it's time to take it off the loom and um, I'm going to go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and prepare it to be cut apart and then I'm gonna hem those ends. And then I think I might just take some time and crochet around them because I want a loop on each one. So, here we go. Let's cut these babies. Oh, I don't know. I don't like wasting yarn. So I think I am gonna go ahead and untie just so I don't have so much scrap yarn because the longer the pieces are, the more I'll be able to use them in the next project because I might just make another set of washcloths. I don't know how many were on this warp, but um, quite a few, I think. And it took about an hour to weave one. So um, I think we've got some beautiful, beautiful ones on here. So we'll see. Let's see if the, having glasses on helps. <laughs> see what you're doing. So sometimes it's a little bit easier just to turn the loom around and um, lean it back on your knees and that way you're working right under in a more comfortable position than stretching to the back of the loom to get these knots untied. Every time you see this patch of the white, that's where I'll cut and hem the next washcloth. So, I'm loving it. It's really fun, isn't it? It's really fun. Now, let's take
just, I'm absolutely loving it. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish to join me along this journey. It's a wild ride. I never really know what's coming except for the color. It will always be colorful. That we do know. <laughs> Check out the description for a little bit more about our tiny house journey, you will find there. And then also check out my playlist, which is the Smart Sexy Small House. And that is the house that we live in now, which is the house after the tiny house. Um, it's 660 square feet. And you can see some of the different projects that we have done around here on that playlist. There's also a playlist called Faith Art in Tiny Houses. That's my podcast. Uh, I took a break. Uh, in 2020 on that for a while, but it will be coming back in 2021. There's some really good past episodes though, so check that out as well, okay? And if it's okay with you, I would like to end with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord keep you from all harm, keep your foot from stumbling and your heart from straying. And may the Lord bless you. And until we meet again, I am I am cramming all the blessings together into one. And until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the palm of her hands. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.